Good morning, everyone. I hope you guys are having a good day. And uh, today I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about uh, how you guys can try and prepare for the CMQ exam uh, very effectively. I, I tried this method myself, and um, it it was very effective. So, like I told you guys that I prepared from the the primer and uh, the handbook. Now, how did I prepare for it? Uh, like I read. First, I read the the handbook cover to cover, and then then I go back to the the primer questions. And uh, this is, for example, uh, the, these are the questions for leadership uh, chapter or the leadership section of the body of knowledge. And then I take my own test. You know, like I I have I have read the entire book, the handbook, and uh, now I should know some answers. Uh, you know, like I should be able to attempt it correctly. So I I take one section, and I, I take it, it's uh, I take my own test, and I mark all the answers here. Like uh, and and like the, where, whenever I have some confusion, I just write it here uh, about the uh, answer. And then I just I just close this one off. I I don't know what the question was, and now I compare the answers to to this sheet. And then I rate my own self, like uh, how, how many marks did I get? In this one, for example, I got 14 out of 32 correct. Uh, wow, that was a disaster. <laughs> but, uh, but it helped me out very well. Because in the next, in, in, in the one that I did before, for example, you see that I yeah, only 9 were wrong. So that makes, that, that makes me like 30. 33 yeah uh, sorry 23 23 correct and here I only have 14 correct so this is a difference that you will get uh, trying this method now once I have marked myself for example the I have only 14 correct and then I read through the primer only one section at a time and then I read the same section from the handbook and then I I go back to this again and then I take my own test again and then and then I like the same way I don't know the answers I I don't come I don't compare answers to the questions so uh, so that way I, I don't know like maybe I try uh, four times five times I don't remember which answer was of which question so remembering the answers is not gonna help you so so this way I have side by side my two tests that I take of my own self and uh, what it helps what it helps is with that it activates the brain circuits in uh, your, your you know like your mind so now you are look carefully looking for the question terms for example if it asks uh, if it is asking for uh, let's see well functioning teams you know like it it tells you four options then you are very uh, you, you your brain when you are reading through your brain is looking for this thing like um, well, well function teams establish competitive leadership create individual covert agendas set and achieve realistic objectives have predetermined goals now this this is a very tricky question for example now if if i'm going to attempt it uh, then i will i will look for the wrong answers first so well-functioning teams. Um, now let's look at the wrong answers first. Like create individual covert agendas. That doesn't make sense. Like so, we slash it, and then establish competitive relationship. Doesn't make sense. Like they have to be cooperative rather than competitive. And now we have two things left. Like set and achieve realistic objectives, and number two is have predetermined goals. Now that that's a tough competition between these two because they they both have uh, uh, like they both sound real answers and I have to pick either of these. So when I'm reading through it, uh, like for example, in in the exam, I make both of these as wrong. Uh, in my both of the exams, uh, sorry, tests. Then I go back to this one and then look look for it. And then I say like 26, which one is? Uh, 66 to 66. And uh, that's a C. 
see he set and achieve realistic objectives and uh, and then i wonder why do fun well functioning teams don't have predetermined goals you know that's that's how uh, that that's how i started it so i only compare the answers to to this one if i may if i have it wrong twice uh, that means that means i missed the same question i, I mean the 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 question statement or the answer to it from my reading and uh, i have to be very care careful about reading it uh, so this is how i prepared for it now it's very easy so for ex the first step i read the book cover to cover uh, then I take my own test from this pri from these primer questions uh, like I don't know the answers I just know how many I got it correct and number four then I prepared from the primer and the book again only one section at a time and uh, number five I then take my own test again and then I see like how how much did I improve like if there are some questions that I have wrong both times only then I go back to it. Only then I go back to the question sheet and then compare it. Like, uh, what did I miss in my reading? Um, and that's how I only prepared for like one month only. Uh, but it wasn't a full time as well uh, because I also have a job. So, yeah, that's it. But uh, my reading, my reading is quite extensive. Like I read a lot. So that that's how I prepared it. And. Uh, like I can, I, I can read for two and three hours straight without taking a break, and uh, and without all, you know, like also without having a burnout. Uh, so that's that that's kind of my competitive advantage. But uh, <clears throat> the real thing is that you you prepare your brain to look for certain terms in the in in your course or in your preparation material, uh, rather than just blindly going through everything. Uh, so take your test and evaluate yourself against uh, whatever uh, section you are reading through or you are planning to read through. Uh, if you take your test first and then you have like maybe nine out of nine correct out of uh, 32, uh, it's, it's still fine. You don't need to lose hope uh, because after all, you are preparing for it and that's, that's the whole reason you're reading it. So don't need to feel bad. Uh, just know that you did wrong. You did not do well, uh, and you 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 just need to prepare more for that. And that's how you know, like you take one test, two tests, three tests, and until you keep improving. And if you are not improving yet, then you will have to you know like change your reading uh, method as well. And then maybe you 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 try to slow down and absorb each section by section. So, for example, I was having uh, so much difficulty in, um, let me just grab the handbook, in uh, the project management tools. Like, I, in my real time, uh, or like real life job, I have not done like too much or too extensive project management. Uh, it, it's like usually usually one project is running and we have all the activities listed out and we know who it is assigned to so it's not like extensive crashing or um, slacking or calculating the, everything else so so I only read one section out of one part and then uh, and then ask myself questions uh, through it like what does this mean in real life for example the uh, the comparison between like the what what would be the time tracking tools for project management um, and uh, what would be the scheduling tools for for project management and so I have so in one page I list all of the tools and uh, then I pick up I kind of sort everything off and uh, and then within the seven quality tools like the new and old like that, that makes 14 so I remain kind of confused though uh, in the start I did not know which tool to use when so I kind of listed everything on one side created a table like it, I, I have 
which situations to use what tool and which situations to not use what tool so for example um, PRT graph uh, PRT chart per chart I think yeah so where can you use that and where you cannot so fish pond diagram where can you use that and where can you not so knowing uh, where you can use that helps a lot but it also helps a lot to know what you cannot use in what situations for example if you if you want scheduling only you maybe your uh, GAN chart is fine but when you have to choose between the GAN chart and PERT chart uh, what difference does it make you know you have to know that uh, because uh, like the budget and everything else maybe I don't know but uh, <coughs> in preparation you have to you have to sort this thing out you know like these things they uh, they are really critical and uh, missing missing one important point uh, could cost you one uh, question and uh, yeah that that's how usually people screw up in my, in my opinion so like they know when to use Gantt Gan chart but they don't know when to, not to use Gantt chart and instead when to use the bird chart so yeah my friends um, another technique that I tried in uh, in attempting the questions within exam is that I mark the wrong answers one by one and then I leave the two where I have uh, the most suspicious and then I just go back to the book read it and then try to absorb it uh, you know like try to estimate like which question would be more right than the other one so for example my friend Mahmoud was saying that uh, it is confusing that which supplier would you choose like the, the most certified or the most qualified now this is kind of a, an, an easy question in my opinion because uh, you don't need the certificates you need qualification for your job because I could have certification in medical uh, equipment but I could not be li uh, like I could not be qualified for uh, some other job so so yeah the, the whole section that supplier qualification is so you, you know like you gotta pick up like it's qualification and not the certification certification is the part of qualification it's kind of a big subset you know uh, so so yeah so these are these uh, they are they are gonna put these sucker questions you know to, to catch you up so you you better be prepared to not get sucked up or you know, so to not attempt it wrong so please let me know you guys if this is uh, helpful and, uh, yeah have a great day everyone bye bye